Now, in the Solomon Islands, a small Australian miner, Axiom, is pushing on with plans for one of the world's biggest nickel mines after winning a long-running legal battle with Japanese heavyweight Sumitomo. Sumitomo has filed one last appeal, but Axiom hopes to be exporting ore to China in 12 months. Liam Cochrane filed this report from the islands of Santa Isabel and San Yorga. For Axiom CEO Ryan Mount and a group of investment bankers, there's a warm welcome to Tahoe Village. <laughs> Nearby is the site the Australian company wants to transform into one of the world's biggest nickel mines. The tenements themselves are uninhabited, but locals from nearby have come to bless the land and the project. We the to ourselves chiefs. The service is a spiritual cleansing after a hard-fought legal battle between the junior Australian company Axiom and Japanese mining giant Sumitomo. The David and Goliath image has resonated amongst the deeply Christian population. Our recent court decisions uh, mean that we can get back on site and start devel de developing this project. The site was first tested in the 1950s and Axiom secured a lease four years ago. The company is currently doing environmental baseline studies before beginning exploration and mine development. Ryan Mount hopes to be shipping ore in 12 months. Now one of the reasons we can bring this to market as, as quickly as what we say we can is because this deposit sit, lies closely to the surface. The deposit also sits right on the shoreline and that, and that shore is, encompasses a natural deep water harbour. Those three aspects combined mean that we can move this to market very quickly. Shipping ore directly to China would have cash flowing in sooner, while an on-site processing option would take longer but increase profit margins. There are critics, although none would appear on camera. They worry about soil runoff during the heavy tropical rains and whether locals really understand the impacts of removing the top layer of their idyllic islands, which they rely on for food. But Axiom prides itself in its relations with local communities, giving the two main landowner groups a 20% stake in the company. The opportunities for them are not, are not just in equity. We're obviously uh, going to be employing uh, a lot of the locals. We have uh, a policy of employing the local landowner groups and villages first before we, we, we go out broad to the market. There are good reasons for getting local landowners on side. A short drive from the Solomon Islands capital Honiara is the Gold Ridge Mine. Until recently, this deposit accounted for 20% of the country's GDP. Now, it lies dormant. In April, the Melbourne-based company St Barbara evacuated its expatriate workers, saying there were security threats following the Solomon Islands' worst floods in living memory. But landowners say there was no need to abandon the mine, instead pointing to plummeting gold prices and friction with locals. No, that's not really need to evacuate the, um, the expats from the site coast because the flash flood was at the plains area and there was no any problem up at the site. Discussions continue on the future of Goldridge but locals are already looking elsewhere. If there is a uh, interested Chinese company or any other companies would like to uh, have an interest in the operation at Goldridge then we can uh, have an open door to discuss and have dialogues with any investors. With the wet season approaching, there are fears the Gold Ridge Tailings Dam might spill over, sending water contaminated with arsenic and cyanide into the river system. The situation at Gold Ridge has been instructive for mining newcomer Axiom. Mining here in Solomon Islands can have its challenges. The Gold Ridge case shows how things can fall apart. But Axiom KB is taking a very different approach and is hoping for very different results. It may be celebration time at Tahoe Village, but Axiom and its local partners have one last legal hurdle. Simitama have lodged an appeal in the, in the Court of Appeal, which is the highest court on this land. Uh, we will deal with that when, when that comes about, and we expect that to come about in February next year. But we're pushing on with this project, and we're very confident of uh, defending our rights again in the, in the Court of Appeal.